The second thing you should do, and this is something that is really has nothing to do with instruments once again, is try to hear melodies without touching the instrument. Because basically what people do, and it's often a mistake, is that they're trying to play a nice melody and the way they do it is that they jump on their instruments. For example, I would jump on the piano and, oh, I want to find a good melody, you know. If I don't hear anything, I'm not going to find anything, right? So what you should do is just get away from the instrument, go outside, take a walk, which we realize is a very inspiring way of hearing music. Take a walk until you hear a melody, until you hear something that you like. Then you go back home, and let's suppose that I'm taking this walk, this imaginary walk, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, I like that. So you bring only a little, you bring, always bring a little digital recorder with you. That's a very important thing for a musician to always have with him or her is a digital recorder at all times. Because you never know when the inspiration is going to strike and you might want to remember what happened in your mind at the moment you felt inspired. So you take this little device and record yourself. Okay, and then you go back to your instrument at home. In my case, the piano, but it could be pretty much anything. Yeah, I'm doing it on purpose, you know, don't worry. Looking for the notes, because I want the notes that I play to be exactly the one that I hear. I don't want this guy to tell me what I have to play. I want to tell this guy what I want to hear. He's my tool. I am the instrument of music. He's only my tool. My tool. So. Oh, good. Now I'm going to transpose it, because I don't want... Now I know you know how my fingers work and it becomes mechanical very easily. So now Please note that I'm always singing or whistling the note before playing it, not after. Because again I want to make sure this guy plays what I hear. Etc. in all kind of keys. For example, if I tell you, Peter, I would like you to play it for me starting with the F sharp. Okay, I'm going to play it again for you in the original key. And we're going to play it in the original key. Sing it first. Da, 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 da. Sing it while moving your fingers on the instrument, the way you hear it. Da, okay. Still singing. Yeah. No, sing and move the fingers. Do not play. Da, 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 da. Okay? Even better, put the instrument in your mouth. Don't play it. Hum and move the fingers. <laughs> Again, because you're not exactly in tune. Now try. Okay, now we're going to redo it from F sharp. Oh, don't play. Sing it. Sing it without me. Don't play it. Sing it while moving your fingers. Da, na, 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 na. Now hum it without playing, still without playing, but moving your fingers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, now play it. Okay. Now you're playing it right. The first time you didn't. So this is a process that you have to go through because this is the, proce that, the process that ensures that whatever is here is going to go into your instrument. And as you understand for an improviser, it is absolutely essential because if I hear something, I don't have a, a second chance. You know, if I hear 
and what comes out is oh, that's not it, over. I'm improvising, you know, I cannot correct myself, it's too late. And that's very unfortunate because it's going to cut the musical flow for me and make me feel bad because I didn't improvise what I was hearing. So that's a very, very inessential exercise.